8.1 where we discuss about the basics of the hypothesis testing and we're going to use proportion and mean to test our claim in section 8.2 and 8.3 so in this section we introduce basics for hypothesis testing and then the steps we need to follow for hypothesis testing keep in mind uh, we only do the testing regarding proportion and means we don't do standard deviation or variance in this course so first of all what is a hypothesis hypothesis is a claim or a statement about the population so for example let's say there is a population and we would like to say something about this population so we use two different type of parameter to estimate the outcome for our finding like proportion or you know uh, the mean right so if we have a claim about the proportion or the mean of this population that is the hypothesis and the process we use to test that claim is called hypothesis test I'm going to show you one claim here in this question as you can see here the claim is the mean systolic blood pressure of all healthy adult is less than 121 mercury milligram millimeter that's the unit for the blood pressure so we our hypothesis is uh, in this particular situation hypothesis is the blood pressure has to be less than 121 so that is the hypothesis that is the claim okay there are two different type of hypothesis uh, we have the first one is null hypothesis that is generated by h0 null so this always contain equality sign so if you if you want to make null hypothesis about the mean then the null hypothesis is supposed to be mean equals something or if it's about the proportion then proportion equals something so null hypothesis is always equal to alternate depends sometimes it's not equal sometimes it's less than sometimes it's greater than okay so there are different notation for the alternating hypothesis but we are going to use h1 for the alternating hypothesis so these are the some uh, these are the steps we're going to follow uh, while doing the hypothesis test first of all we need to identify the claim we need to give a symbolic form like greater less not equal and then we need to introduce our alternate hypothesis and then null hypothesis and then we need to select our significance level depending on what confidence significance level depending on what confidence level you want or what type of confidence interval you need a uh, meaning here you need to uh, you know introduce or uh, you need to use the value of alpha the alpha the same alpha we use in chapter 7 and then after that we need to identify our test statistics it depends on what type of you know distribution you have and what type of parameter you are using there are different type of test statistics for example if there is a population parameter you are if you are you are using parameter a uh, proportion then um, test statistic would be uh, the G score if you are using mean then test statistics might be T score or uh, the G score if you have standard deviation you know then test statistics may, might be chi square which we don't cover in this course okay and based on your test statistics there are two different methods we are going to use for the hypothesis test one is p-value method another one is critical value method okay and p-value method or critical value method both of them it depends on what kind of you know uh, uh, test statistics you have and where it is okay and then finally after finding you know the p-value if you're going to the left side you compare the p-value with the alpha alpha means the significance level and you make your uh, you know decision 
like either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then from the critical value method, again, if your test statistics is in the critical region, then you reject the null hypothesis. And if it's outside the critical region, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Depending on what finding you have, you make your final, uh, restate your final conclusion in uh, non-technical terms. So these are the steps we follow. Okay. So step one, one more time, identify the claim to be tested and express it in symbolic form. Step two, give the symbolic form that must be true when the original claim is false. Step three, introduce your null hypothesis and alternating hypothesis and look at your significance level, that's step four. The significance level alpha for hypothesis test is the probability value. It's the same value we used in chapter seven depending on what um, confidence level you want, okay? So what is the significance level actually? Significance level is, it's a probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is true, okay? So you have the null hypothesis and you reject the null hypothesis though it's supposed to be true. What is the probability of that? What is the chance of that? that is the significance level that is actually the error so that's the significance level popular common significance level are like five percent one percent ten percent but most popular is five percent okay we need to identify the test statistics depending on what information you have given uh this is the table we can use if the population parameter is proportion then test statistics is g score. This is the formula. If population parameter is mean, then there are two different scenario, like in chapter seven. And based on the scenario, we might have to find the t score or the g score. And now, after finding this test statistics, you have to, if you are using the p-value method, if you are, you know, there are two different methods, p-value method or critical value method. Let's assume that we are using p-value method. So for the p-value method, you need to check what type of test you have, two-tail test, left-tail test, or right-tail test. And it depends on what you have given. If, for example, let's say if you have given proportion less than 0 0.7, here's the less than sign for the proportion, that's our claim we want to claim that proportion has to be less than 0 0.7, then in this case, it's a left side test. If proportion is not equal, that means it's a two-tail test. And if proportion is greater than, that's a right-tail test. Instead of proportion, you might have mean. So, you know, same thing applies. And based on what type of test you have, you need to find the area under the curve. And that gives you the p-value, okay? So based on your finding for the p-value, um, you can find, you know, based on what tail test you have given, you can find the p-value. Let's say if you have a right tail test, then p-value is, is equal to the area to the right of that test statistics. If it's a left tail test, that is the same thing, area to the left to that test statistics. But if it's two tail test, then you find the area to one of the side and then multiply it by two. That's how you find the p-value. And after finding the p-value, these are the notations, you, to make the decision, you compare the p-value with the alpha significance level. If p-value is less or equal alpha, reject the null hypothesis. P is low, null must go. If p-value is greater than alpha, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Similarly, if the test statistics is in critical reason, you find the test statistics and that's in the critical reason, then reject the null hypothesis. If test statistics is not in the critical reason, then fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's how we make our decision. Finally, this is the very, very important um, step 
after our final decision we need to restate our decision using the simple and non-technical term if you know how do you do that this flowchart might be helpful you start your problem if your problem ha has the claim where there is a for example let's say proportion has to be equal or mean has to be equal so if there is equality sign you go to the right side if there is a non-equality side meaning less than or greater than sign then you go to this left side and then you follow the flowchart i'm going to show you an example to make the final um, decision so a confidence interval estimate of population parameter contains the likely values of that parameter. If you remember the chapter 7, we found the confidence interval. And while finding the confidence interval, let's say this is the confidence interval for the population proportion. According to this confidence interval, we are, for example, let's say this is 95% confidence level. We are 95% confidence that population parameter should be in between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. That's the confidence interval. We cover that in chapter 7, right? But sometime when we do that, we might have error. Okay? So, is confidence interval equivalent to a hypothesis test in the sense that they always lead to the same conclusion? If your parameter is proportion, the answer is no. They might give you the two different results. If you are using the mean, then your answer is yes. So the confidence interval versus the, you know, uh, the hypothesis test, depending on what parameter we are using, they might lead you to the same direction, same conclusion, or may not be true. Depending on if it's a proportion, then answer might be different. So based on that information, we have two different type of error we are going to introduce here. Type 1 error. It is actually the value of alpha, which is probability of rejecting null hypothesis when null hypothesis is true. And type 2 error is the probability of failing the null hypothesis, sorry, probability of failing to reject the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is false. So we might have this type of error based on our finding. So these are the information you need in this section 8.1. Now let's look at some examples. Let's just start with question number one. Fill in the blank. The null hypothesis is a statement that the value of a population parameter is equal to the sum claimed value. Equal means it's a null hypothesis. Let's go to next problem. Maybe question number two. Use the hypothesis testing flowchart to answer the following question, which one of the following is symbolic form of the claim that the mean weight of house flies is more than 0 0.002? More than, so it's greater. Mean, it means mu. So this is the symbolic form. Okay. How we'll go to next problem. Let's say question number five here. Claim. The mean systolic blood pressure of all healthy adult is less than 121 mercury millimeter. Express the original claim in symbolic form. So mean is less than 121. That's the symbolic form. That's the original claim. What is the null hypothesis? Remember, the null hypothesis is same symbol but equal. And what is the alternating? Alternate is in this case, it's less than. We want to check this is less than. That's why it's 121. It's not always less than. It depends on situation. But in this case, it's a less than. Okay. Let's uh, go to question. This question. We have given the test statistics. It's already given. That's a G score. When testing the claim, the claim is uh, uh, proportion is not equal 0.236. Identify the hypothesis test as being two tail, left tail or right tail. If it's not equal, if you remember, uh, if it's not equal, then it's always two tail test. So it's a two tail test. 
Now, if you have two tell test and if you want to find out the p value, you have to find the area under the curve to the right side or the left side of this test statistics and multiply that by two. But how do you find the area? Because it's a G score, you go to the uh, start crunch, you go to normal calculator for finding the area like uh, we did in previous um, chapter and then you just put the information here the test statistics g score keep in mind this is to the right side so we choose greater or equal 2.62 and if you hit compute this is the area under the curve to the right side of this g score which is 0 0.00439649 but this is the two tail test so we need to multiply this area by two this area by two so take this area which is point zero zero four three nine six four nine times it by two and that is your p-value depending on what uh rounding to the three decimal place it's a point zero zero nine that's a p-value So now, after finding the p-value, if you go back to your problem here, uh, if you go back to your notes here, now you have to compare your p-value with the value of alpha. If it's greater than alpha, fail to reject. If it's less than alpha, uh, reject the null hypothesis. In this case, alpha is 0 0.05 and uh, p-value is 0 0.009 so less than alpha if it's less than alpha reject null hypothesis so reject null hypothesis there are two different options a and d so we have to go one more step further to make the final non-technical wording decision so look at here start the problem does the original claim contain the condition equal sign no do you reject the null hypothesis yes we did reject the null hypothesis right sorry we did reject the null hypothesis because the value of p value is less than alpha so if you reject the null hypothesis this is your final conclusion there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that so reject and then there is sufficient evidence so this is your final reject the null hypothesis there is sufficient evidence keep in mind we reject the null hypothesis because the value of um, the p-value is that p-value is less than alpha okay okay let's do one problem for critical value method okay question this question test statistics of g score negative 2.33 is obtained when test testing the claim that proportion is not equal to 2.59 this is a two tail test using alpha equals significance label complete part a through uh, a and b find the critical values for finding the critical values because it's a two tail test uh, it's a two tail test you need to use value of alpha okay so let me just um, okay okay so alpha is 0 0.01 alpha is 0 point using a point 0.1 significance level sorry alpha is 0.1 not 0 0.01 alpha is 0.1 so that's a 10 percent so this is a two tail test so you have to divide this area into 10 percent 10 percent means it has to be five percent and this has to be five percent now we would like to find out the test statistics or g score such that the area under the curve to the right is five percent and to the left is also five percent so how do you do that you go to the start crunch you go to normal calculator and then you go to less or greater sign we know 
area under the curve to the right is 0 0.05 which is 5% this is 1.6448 so we need um, two decimal places so it's a 1.64 and if you make it to the left side 5% it will be the same value but negative 1.64 so the two critical values are there are two critical values it's a negative 1.64 and positive 1.64 so for finding the critical value you need to use the significance label okay now we have this critical reason now which is a uh, negative 1.64 positive 1.64 now we need to go to the problem and check where does this test statistics belong negative 2.33 so negative 2.33 belongs here this is critical reason this is critical reason that belongs here so now we know the you know uh, the test statistics belongs to the critical reason so we go back to our finding here and then make the decision if the test is in the critical reason reject the null hypothesis so because test statistics is in the critical reason we reject the null hypothesis so there are two options null hypothesis would be rejected since the test strategy is in the critical reason that's the answer okay okay let's go to the next problem question number 10 assume a significance level alpha equal 5% alpha equal 5% significance level alpha equal 5% here um, use the given information original claim more than 44 percent of adult would erase all of their personal information online if they could the hypothesis test result in a p-value of 0 0.0181 so p-value is already given uh the proportion is given now we need to check what happens so p-value is less than uh the alpha if p-value is less than alpha then what happens Okay, this is easy one. P value is less than alpha, then reject the null hypothesis. So the conclusion is reject the null hypothesis. There are two different options with the reject null hypothesis. Reject null hypothesis because the p value is less than or equal alpha. Yeah, that's right. That's the right option. Now Without using technical terms, state a final conclusion that addresses the original claim. For that, you always have to use this flowchart. So the original claim doesn't have equality sign, so you go to this side. Do you reject the null hypothesis? Answer is yes. Then this would be your final conclusion. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that. So we go here, reject the null hypothesis. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that percentage of adult that would erase all of their personal information online if they could is more than 44%. Is that more than 44%? More than 44%. So this is, this is our finding. There is sufficient evidence. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that supposed to be our final uh, finding. Okay. Let's do one more example to understand that flowchart use the hypothesis testing procedure for hypothesis test flowchart that means we're talking about this one and um, answer the question in conducting a hypothesis test the significance level is five percent and it is found that p-value is 0.25 so p-value is greater than alpha so whenever p-value is greater than alpha then what happens if p-value is greater than alpha fail to reject so Keep in mind, uh, first of all, you know, p-value is greater than alpha. So we have to, if p-value is greater than alpha one more time, where's that? Fail to reject. So the option is fail to reject null hypothesis. Fail to reject null hypothesis. Okay. Finally, one question 
for error if you remember type 1 error means the chances of making chances of rejecting null hypothesis when null hypothesis is true and type 2 error is chances of failing to reject the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is false so let's go back here and read identify the type 1 error and type 2 error the proportion of people who write with their left hand is equal to 0.22 so what is the type 1 error for this case proportion of people who write with their left hand is equal to 0.22 so type 1 error is rejecting null hypothesis when true uh, the null hypothesis is true so answer is supposed to be either a or d reject the claim that the proportion of the people who write with their left hand is 0.22 when the proportion is actually different from 0.22 no reject the claim that proportion of the people who write with their left hand is 0.22 when actually that's true so that's type 1 error what's the type 2 error fail to reject so now we have to focus on a or b fail to reject the claim that proportion of the people who write with their left hand is 0.22 when that is the wrong statement so this one fail to reject the claim when that is false okay 